one of the things that we talk about when we do the casting things is first of all we talk about the types of materials that you might use if you were going to cast. So the first thing is to kind of get some terminology down. Uh, I'm making a mold. That's the piece that's going to form around like this for my part. The part that I'm going to cast is going to be the part that I take out and that's going to be out of urethane. The mold is going to be out of silicone. This is, this is actually the master but it's the part that came out of this mold and I'll talk about that in just a second. We're going to actually make a mold and pour it here tonight um, as you watch. At any rate, I use silicone as my molding compound and I use urethane as my casting compound and I use plaster. And the first thing you want to kind of consider is what do you want to make the part out of after you have the mold? And how soft does the mold have to be so that you don't tear up the part, especially if you're casting in plaster, as you demold the part? So the first thing I want to go into, this is a little chart from Smooth On and um, they um, are one of the more friendly companies I think towards consumers. Okay, down here I have a soft gummy bear, a chewy candy. And there are two ways to measure hardness. Now you may be familiar in steel with a Rockwell scale. They say the steel is so much Rockwell, that means how hard the steel is. This is a, a, a measure of softness or hardness in soft materials, however you want to take a look at it. It's called a Shore Hardness Scale. It's male, named after a man by the name of Shore. And the first scale here is an A scale. The second one is a D scale. Nobody really refers, I don't think, too much to this uh, Shore Zero Zero scale. So on A, I'm a little bit low with gummy bears. They normally wouldn't do it. This is a gel sole insert that you'd see on TV. Here's a rubber band. And you see now that we're on the A scale and we're around 10 to 20 in a durometer. A durometer, again, is the measure of hardness. So I'm on A scale and at 20. Down here is a hard hat. I'm on the D scale and I'm up in 80. That's hard. This one is fairly soft. I can bend it. And this one is just flat out hard. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's hard. And those are all scales, and I've got them marked on here so I can tell kind of what the hardness is. These are my urethanes, they're softer. These are the, or excuse me, these are the silicones that I'm going to make the mold out of. These are the urethanes I'm going to make the part out of. So the first thing I have to decide is how hard does the mold have to be? How hard does the part have to be? Because I want to be able to demold it. And one quick word on this guy before we put him away. I'll give you a fast reference. That's the website for Smooth On. This chart that I showed you and all kinds of information, anything you'd want to know about the silicones is available on SmoothOn.com. You'll also see a phone number there. Do not hesitate to call them. They are extremely friendly. They are extremely helpful. And if you tell them I want a mold of, of whatever, they'll tell you or give you an idea of what silicone you might use and what urethane you might use. They have all kinds of instructions online as well on the Smooth On website. I want to talk about good things and bad things in molding because I've done several bad things along the line and I mixed up as you can see a fairly large batch. I had one of those old ice cream half gallon tubs that I mixed up in and I'll show you how we did that. I was not happy with this and I'm still really not overly happy with it but it's better. It does not stick to my fingers anymore. And what happened was this was poured two days ago. And what I'm doing right now is just cutting off the excess here. Um, it came out extremely sticky. Way too sticky. And uh, so I put it out in the sun this afternoon and I baked it a little bit. Now Fran, my wife, asked, well don't you want to put that in the oven? because I can kick it up to about 200 degrees and we can set that thing off a little faster. I said, no, I don't think we want to do 200 degrees. I think that might be a bit warm for it. So at any rate, what I do is I make this, it's called a mold box, this part that it's molded in. And I'm just trying to cut some of this excess off around here so it doesn't grab the mold so badly, the box. Um, this mold that I'm getting ready to do and this one that, that I did with some of the excess is what I would call a flat mold or an open face mold. 
it had sides on here and sides on here which you can see I've broken off and then I popped this guy out now the advantage is that when I go to cast I can now pour this full and then put that on top and it will give me a flat back so we'll actually cast this here tonight uh, at least that's my plan anyway this thing's almost ready to come out I've got it exposed here so I can get a hold of it so we'll start pulling on it and hoping that it lets go I always pull slowly and it's, it's better to keep your hand down here tight to whatever you're pulling don't go over here and, and yank on it because you'll have to tear it in half it is new and fresh and you don't want to tear it before you even have a chance to use it the first time anyway I've got this mold ready to go I did a flat back because I put a piece of uh, plastic on it to keep it nice and flat so now when I lay it down here and I put another piece of plastic on top I'll get a piece that looks just like the Walters piece so this thing is extremely thin I made this much thicker I put a piece of uh, plastic on there and built that up where it's almost a quarter of an inch thick because since I'm going to build this in plaster I need to have it much thicker so it will hold up this would be entirely too thin there is a piece of gator board inside in here in the middle to keep it from sinking um, so that any pressure that was on it would not cause it to, to warp and move around if I tried to demold this thin piece it would break coming out of the mold so I had to thicken it up just to make it work I took crazy glue and I put it all around the inside edge of my uh, walls here my dams around on my mold box and I put super glue all the way around over the bottom edge here to keep the silicone from running either under the piece or out it, it looks like it would never run out but trust me I've got some on the floor over here where it ran out of uh, the larger mold box here this one uh, on the floor I had one little leak there and luckily it just leaked a little bit and then the the leak kind of plugged itself but if that leak had been up a little higher it wouldn't have plugged it would have kept right on coming out uh, this stuff gets out and just goes everywhere there are two types of uh, things that you have to worry about in the cast process one is how long do I have to mix it and then how long before it sets because you're going to see as we've cast some of these parts here a little later in the show as soon as I start mixing, mixing it I can start to feel the heat that it's generating and heat is what sets the urethanes off the, the part that you're going to cast so you don't you don't want to be mixing very much until you get these things into uh, the mold they'll start to get thick on you and then you won't be able to pick up your details okay so what I got here let's go to this guy and we'll go a little tighter whoops <laughs> go the other way I ever learned how to do this there we go come back over there you can see that all right what I did just not more than an hour ago I kind of started to panic that I didn't have a mold box for you so I made this up very quickly this is the way I make my mold boxes because it's extremely easy the first piece that I put on was this one and I put it flush with this edge and then I cut it a little long I cut the next one a little long the next one a little long and the last one I'm going to put on here is going to be a little long the reason I do that is because I don't have to measure <laughs> I line up the first one and then all the rest of them fit around and I just glue them on and I'm done and it also you saw as I was taking that wood one off it gives me a thumb place there to push and get rid of that I can knock it off otherwise the only thing that I do is I've got some 10x7 here if you can see that and what I'm going to do is just take and put a dot down here and grab my other little electric meter that's what these are the full scale electric meters and I'm going to stick that down now a quick word the silicones that I use and there's a, a term for them I, I, so I'm just going to go the other way because I can't remember the term for them right now it just escaped me I do not use silicones that are um, platinum based platinum based silicones are touchy they don't like the, some of the glues they don't like some of the paints that we use on our masters um, the regular silicones that you get from um, smooth on unless you request specifically a platinum um, they'll work real well so I'm going to put the last of my box on here just by sticking that in place get my hands out of the way so you can see what's going on and I'm going to hold this for a minute because I need it to set it's got a little bow in it and I don't want it to leak out as we work on it okay I think you can see it from there I've got these marked as cast 
I've got this one marked as mold, so I don't mess up. <laughs> this is Rebound 25. It is a very soft um, silicone. Okay, let's do something with this uh, mold compound here. This is part A, and I always try and read this fir first. It says stir part B. Yeah. Now, you know, the other obvious question would be, okay, you've got all that silicone, how long will it stay on the shelf? This is dry air, and you can buy it at um, almost any of the casting places, smooth on, and all those guys sell it. <coughs> what you should do to make this silicone last longer, and the urethanes as well, is I unscrew the cap, I barely open it a little bit, you see the little crack there, and then I take this and I shoot a little in. And that puts a nitrogen blanket on top of it, that's what's actually in here. So you take this guy and you do the same thing, a little crack, shoot a little to it. You can kind of see, I hope, that I have about equal parts here um, on that, and that's what I should have is 50-50. Now, you're probably going to ask, why do you have that big cup? Because I'm going to throw all this stuff into that big cup in a minute. Because this stuff is going to get ten times as big as it is right now. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to mix this together. I did stir up the B part, which is the nice, pretty orange stuff. Now, you can get by without it expanding and without doing the expensive piece of equipment that I'm going to use. And I'll show you how to do that. So stick with me. I'm going to show you how to do it for almost no money. Okay, now we're going to mix this. The nice thing about this colored stuff is, oh, a, a quick word. I should have on safety glasses, which I do, and you probably want to work with some gloves. What I have here is a desiccant chamber. Essentially, it is a vacuum chamber. And that is, in my opinion, the best way to go. Right. And we're going to put that down in here. I have foil in my desiccant chamber because if it ever does bubble over, it doesn't ruin my chamber. Pardon the noise, but I'm going to suck a vacuum here. <laughs> and so what we have now is we have our silicone ready to pour. And what I put in here pretty much has no air, hopefully. 